Brethren, praise the Lord. God is good all the time. And we, this time round, get to share about watch and pray. Remember, we are in Lent season and it's a 40 day journey that God purposes for us this time round. And we are going to base ourselves on Jesus' own word that he says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Remember the time when our Lord Jesus Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the time of trial. And remember, we go through lots of trials ourselves too in this season, during our times anyway. And Jesus tells them, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, Jesus gives the disciples this instruction, watch and pray. And therefore, we pray that God our Father listens to our prayer during this season and that we shall continue moving in power in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, Jesus is our answer. He tells his disciples, watch and pray so that you will fall not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So keep awake. This season is a wake-up call. Keep awake. Be ready. Be cautious. Be careful. Be attentive. And so all time is an invitation for us as Christians. Christian believers, we are called upon to be on the alert. And so Jesus mentions that to his disciples. And in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, Matthew 24, 42, the Bible says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what time the Lord will come. And so we are invited. And this season is an invitation to watch and pray. Because we know not the time. We live. We don't know what tomorrow will be. We live, we don't know what next year will be, but we are called upon to watch and pray. In Matthew 25, 13, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. This was a story about the ten virgins, and they were there, each of them with their lanterns, but only five were ready. And so we call upon ourselves to be on the alert. I would give many, many portions of scripture about watch and pray, but let me just run to the reasons why you must watch and pray. Because Jesus has given his disciples here watch and pray. Now, reason number one that you must watch and pray during this season is because watchfulness sees temptations coming. When you watch, when you are alert, when you are ready, when you're on the lookout, you see temptations coming. So, my brothers, prayer gives us strength to withstand, but also to be watchful, looking. Alertness is necessary. Being awake is necessary and on guard. The reason why we tell whether there are students in school that be on the alert because they know not when an examination will be given or a test will be given. So when you are ready, you prepare yourself, you dust yourself, you organize yourself, meaning that you have to be to be prayerful, you need to be alert, connection with God, like the one we talked about, vertical relationship with God is paramount here. And so you watch because when you are watching, the eyes will be seeing. Now we can be talking about these physical eyes, but we're talking about the spiritual eyes to see maybe which corner the temptation could be coming from. So watchfulness sees temptations coming. Point number two, constant connection with God is necessary and needed for power to overcome all sin. And I've already mentioned this, you become an overcomer because better prepared, you are able to deal with the situation. The Baganda say, meaning actually when something comes and you are aware, you are alert, it enables you to overcome. So be minded, be sober, be sober minded, be watchful during this season and not only during this season we are called upon to carry on 
even when Lent is over to carry on because we do not know the time when the Lord Jesus will come. Now, even the disciples, remember, in the Luke chapter 11, the Bible says that the disciples of Jesus asked him, teach us how to pray. And so this season, we need to be on the watchful because even the disciples needed it, needed to be watchful, needed to know when temptation will come. And so you and I are called upon to watch and pray because it is needed. Number three, we must watch, we must pray because it attracts God. And as you read Psalm 66, verse 16, you'll discover that actually prayer of repentance deals with the sin, and we're called upon you and I to deal with the sin, internal sin and sins that could be. Then God listens to our prayer and acts on our behalf. And I want to praise God for this, that God listens to our prayer. And so why not attract the attention of God God is lantern, God is light to keep shining upon you. And he will proclaim, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased because it has attracted. And remember when Jesus was out of the water after baptism and the declaration was made, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And now we need to attract God's will. We need to attract God's attention. We need to attract God's love. We need to attract God's favor. We need to attract God's, you know, goodness upon us. And so point number four, prayer moves the angels. Daniel chapter nine, the man was a prayerful man. He prayed and it's a long prayer. When you get there, you read, Daniel literally prayed, prayed. And I want to ask you, take off some time and read Daniel chapter nine. It has marvelous information. It has marvelous connection that Daniel had with God. But this prayer, we say, attracted the angel's attention. Prayer initiates angelic attention, and it actually refers me back even to Jacob when he was moving. His lying down on the ground was not just merely lying, but he was in connection with God, and there was, there was a stairwell of angels coming up and down. And so the Bible talks about spiritual battles that we fight, and when we're fighting them, we don't fight by the physical, but the, the spiritual things and therefore we needed to ask God to the angels to stand with us and remember Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 the Bible says that after all is done the angels came and ministered unto him now my brothers and sisters there is a secret there attract in your relationship with God defeat temptation battle and win you attract angels you attract angelic attention. And that is what we are after. That's what we are to. So that actually God does it. He influences our lives and we move on. Now the other thing is prayer. Prayer and being watchful attracts, attacks, attacks demons. And you know the portion of scripture that's very, very clear. I mean Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 following. Finally, my brothers and sisters, you know, he tell Paul to be armed, put on the whole armor, the whole armor of God. And so this is the battle. We're on the battleground, we're in the battlefield. So prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. And that weapon that attacks and defeats the spiritual forces of the evil one. Now Paul puts it in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And I want to ask you to open there and you read you'll discover that there is a lot of information. And it's one of my favorite portions of scripture because Paul says, put on the whole armor, whole armor in every area of your life, on the head, on the shoulders, on the legs, on the eyes, on the whole armor of God. And so this season is what we are calling upon ourselves, that we need to put on the whole armor of God because we are in living in a world full of attacks. The demonic attacks are so much, sicknesses are so much, you know, so many of those. Now we are asked, put on the whole arm of God. Put on the whole arm of God. Now, another thing is, as I went, as I tend to the finish, that prayer unlocks us. The Bible in Psalms 32, verses 1 to 7, the Bible says, Be blessed. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. When you are forgiven, you are unlocked, you are set free. That's what it means. So acknowledge your sin and confess it before God, repent it, turn around, 
and walk God way to deal with guilt turn God way now remember prayer will refocus you and this season I've called it a moment of refocusing a moment of reorienting ourselves a moment of re-energizing a moment of reviving and so we need to refocus young man or man or woman or whoever you are refocus yourself real power comes from god nowhere else and so i want to add here another one that prayer transforms us and in job chapter 22 verse 27 to 30 job says you will make your prayer to him and he will hear you you will also declare a thing and it will be established this is great eh? it will be established for you so light will shine on your ways that's my prayer for you that your light that light will shine upon your ways so praying you pray for yourself but also pray for others give them and this prayer for others give them courage gives them influence in their decisions that they make so you will establish you will declare a thing and to be established now my brother this is a sweet one this is the reason why we need to be connected with god and watch and pray because it will be it will transform us to pray for ourselves to pray for others and declare a thing and it will be established it is something that i enjoy in my life and it's a great thing and now this is what i brought for you today that God is will be done in your life. That you watch and pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. We have lots of the temptations. Men, we have temptations. Women have temptations. Children, boys and girls, the young people have temptations. But our desire that we draw closer to God and that we shall be able to withstand, like Paul tells the Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God. And all these things, you will attract the angelic attention, that you will attract God's attention, you will be transformed, you will attack the demons of sickness, demons of whatever they are, and you will be a victor. So this time, we need to refocus our attention, because watchful and prayerfulness is ideal and it's mandatory for every Christian believer. So as you watch me, as you see me, may God, who is our Father, refocus you, pray away, watchful way, and so let it be that you are a watcher. Be a watcher in prayer, be a watcher in everything that you do, and God's will will be done in your life. So I thank God for this time for you, that God, who is our Father, will keep keeping you, and that we shall keep interacting with God's word, to keep watching, and God's attention will be on us. And God will declare, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter with whom I'm well pleased. My desire for you, my desire for myself, that God declares us as sons and daughters in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.